The best way to do partial fractions is not to do partial fractions. Check this out. For the first one, we have to integrate x squared over x to the fourth power minus 1. Well, usually we just go ahead and factor this, and we get x squared minus 1 times x squared plus 1. And traditionally, we will factor this again, and then we have to break down into three little fractions, and we actually get a, b, c, and d, and we have to set up system equations and things like that, right? Don't do that. Life doesn't have to be that hard. Check this out. I am going to look at this as integral, and then we still have x squared over, here we have x squared minus 1 times x squared plus 1. This is so nice because we have the x squared here, here, and here. Well, wouldn't it be nice if on the top here we have x squared minus 1? Yeah, because that way this and that will cancel. So am I going to just minus 1 here and then plus 1? No, not really, because if I do that, the plus 1 over the denominator, it might be just as hard as the original. But you see, here, we also have the x squared plus 1. This is what we're going to do. Let me go ahead and add another x squared, because I would like to do some cancellations right here as well. But you see, this way, 1x squared plus 1x squared is 2x squared. Originally, we won't have 1. Don't worry, let's just multiply by 1 half. So if you work that out, the 2x squared, the 2 will cancel with the 1 half. Good. And now, everything is going to be very balanced, because here is the blue pen. We will see that, if I can open this. I'm going to minus 1 here, and then I'm going to add 1 here. Wow, this is so, so, so nice. Check this out. All the way in the front, we have the 1 half, and then we have the integral. I'm going to just put this over the denominator, and when we do that, this and that cancel. So just ignore that. We get 1 over that, so we have 1 over x squared plus 1. Secondly, we ignore this first two parts, and we have this over that. This and that cancel, so we just have 1 over that. So plus 1 over x squared minus 1, and then dx. Put the parentheses, people like me to do that. And now we can actually integrate each term, because for the first one, oh well, yes, we still have the 1 half in the front. This is going to give us inverse tangent, no problem on that. This is x squared minus 1. Let me tell you this. This is the inverse original tangent, right? But if you differentiate the inverse of the hyperbolic tangent, written in this way, this right here gives you 1 over, unfortunately, it's 1 minus x squared. So what do we do? Well, this is x squared minus 1. We can just factor out negative so that we can kind of just switch the order of subtraction. And of course, we just have that. So this guy is going to be inverse tangent, but the hyperbolic version of it. And then we have the x. Yep, just like this. And then we're all done, put a plus c. That's it. And in fact, when you integrate this right here, and if you want to use the hyperbolic version, uh, for the answer, you have to be careful. I actually have another video going over that, so if you guys would like, you can check that out. But I want to put this down for the answer because you can see how similar this and that is. So yeah. Okay, what do we do with the second one? Factor out the x? No, don't do that. That's the traditional way, right? You don't want to do a lot of partial fractions, huh? Instead of factoring out the x, let's factor out the x to the fourth power, the bigger power. And you end up with 1 minus x to the negative 3. Because original this is 1, you brought up 4 of them, so you have minus 3 left. 1 minus 4 is negative 3, yeah. Check this out, check this out, check this out. This guy, on the bottom, we can bring that up. This is the same as the top is x to the negative 4, right? Bring that up, we get x to the negative 4. And then on the bottom, we have 1 minus x to the negative 3. What good does this do? Well, I can just do a u-sub, let u equal the bottom, which is 1 minus x to the negative 3, and then do the usual business, du equals positive 3 x to the negative 4 dx. Usually I tell people to isolate the dx, but check this out. This is x to the negative 4, let's just multiply by 3, and then let's divide it by 3. Why? Because this way, look, 
we get the du and then we have the u on the bottom so in fact this is going to be one third and we integrate one over u in the u world so we just get natural log of u and u can be negative so we will have to put absolute value of u which is that one minus x to the negative three and guess what we are done so we can just put on the plus c right here as well see i told you the best way to do partial fractions is not to do partial fractions in fact whenever you have this kind of things if x to some power right here minus x to the first power you can always do that go ahead and give it a try x to the 17th minus x to the first power or maybe plus doesn't matter up to you so next time when you see an integral of a rational function maybe think about how you can make things happen like this or maybe try a different way to factor and maybe good things will happen